am going to do the first wrap ever, I think, on a TFL uh, Pursuit. You can see it back here. Uh, I've wanted to do a template and wrap this boat for a long time, and I have some time this month because I've taken the month off. Uh, my wife and I just uh, brought a little girl into the world, and while they are relaxing at the hospital, here I am working, and I'm celebrating with a little bit of beer. I guess that's one of the benefits of being self-employed. You can you can have a beer and install a wrap on a boat and still get paid for it and not fired, right? Uh, I decided to do another pursuit. Excuse me. I decided to do another chaos kit in the <clears throat> uh, Honeychrome, which just got released uh, <clears throat> about a week ago. I think it's going to look amazing. Uh, let me go over this boat real quick. So I ordered this boat new, obviously, uh, to uh, make a template. And when it got here, the clear coat was coming off on anywhere where this sort of screen imprinted logo was. And as I kind of looked at it, it would just flake right off. I don't know what the deal was with that. Uh, instead of returning it to the person or the company I got it from, they didn't do, it's not their fault. It just looks like a manufacturing defect. I went ahead and took the clear coat off and, there, and it literally came off on a perfect line around all of the graphics. Like I, it's amazing. It's perfect on all of the yellow. Nothing came off on on this uh, on the cap, but it's gone here and it's gone here and gone on the stripe and here and the skulls and what have you. Uh, I am going to sell this boat, um, like I do most of my boats, after I get this kit on. So, if you're watching this video, uh, I just wanted to go over that aspect. Um, I'm going to knock some money off this and not charge for any of the labor, uh, and the boat could be yours, you know, and you'll have this graphic kit on it, and it'll last you years and years and years, and you won't have to worry about it. I'm going to go over something else uh, with this boat, and this has been a common question that I have, which is, do I really have to paint my boat black, or do I really need a white boat? And the answer is no. You can do whatever you want, but the best color to put this stuff on is black. And like I've said in my other videos, the reason is this stuff is nice and thick so that when you take it off the release line and put it on, it doesn't crumble in your hands or stretch a lot like a car wrap would. That would be nearly impossible for you guys, if you're just weekend warriors doing this, to, to put on. The fact that I make these thicker makes this multitudes easier uh, for you to install. When you get a product that thick, you cannot overlap the graphics because what you end up getting is this step down tunnel where it overlaps where the water and dirt can get in and you run into problems so we need to leave a gap between edges if you have a black boat when you step back as long as you installed everything nice and even it looks like the seams on a, on a car or a truck right where the doors close and you have nice perfect black lines you don't even realize you're looking at it because we're all used to seeing cars and trucks. But when you look at a look at a white truck, there's black shadow lines in between the door jams and the hood jams. And that's the same thing we're going for here. And that's why your eyes and your brain don't look at that and say, ooh, I don't like that. Because we're used to it. We see it all the time. I understand that painting boats is a time-consuming process. You got to make sure you get you know, primed right, you gotta make sure you get a clear coat on it. So I've come up with a with a solution if you don't wanna do that, and the solution is six dollars. Let's go over that. I'm gonna take this and just set it aside for now. I'm gonna bring my boat forward, okay? I'm gonna show you the solution. This is a Sharpie Magnum permanent marker, and it's a pro, okay? I'll put a link up above where I got this from. I've tested about five different Sharpies. I had the industrial grade ones. I've had the standard ones. This is the one that works. I have the original package here. It's right here. And what I also want to show you is it comes in different uh, tip sizes, right? So you can see 
it comes in, I have the king size, it comes in the, uh, the point chisel. <clears throat> what you can do with this is you can literally take it and go over the rolled edge where the graphics are going to fall and it puts down a beautiful black barrier, okay? As you can see, I'm running it across. I'm using my fingers to keep it steady. I'm just gonna give it a second to dry here. I'm gonna hold this up. And now I've got black where my two edges of the graphics are gonna meet on that rolled edge. Standard on most boats. You, you get a gap on this rolled edge as it comes down around because I can't get this thick stuff to really sit down very well. So we split it, okay? Typically, there's other gaps, right? So around the cap here, can't go down over the rolled edge. Same with this. And so you can use this marker before you start your project, and you can just very cleanly go around all those edges. And when you're done, it's going to look like you have a black painted boat. Disclaimer. This does stay behind if you, you know, clean it with isopropyl alcohol. So... I tested that and you can see what it's done here, at least on this boat. It's upon cleaning it off with isopropyl, it's left this sort of shadow here, okay? So you don't wanna paint your boat and you really wanna set a graphics that's gonna, you know, you're gonna invest in this and you, it's gonna last you for years as long as you take care of it. You can go this route for $6. I mean, actually, you're probably using 50 cents worth of it, you know, to do the whole boat. Now it does take some extrapolation right because you need to I'm looking for my graphics here you need to look at the graphics kit when it's laying on your table and say okay there's going to be a gap here there's going to be a gap there and you have to in advance plan the best you can to mark up where those gaps are going to be you can also do this with you know a body on an rc car or truck that's screen printed. You don't want to get a clear Lexan body and paint it black. Although in that situation, you know, painting the Lexan body black on the backside is super easy, you know, for 50 to $80 to buy a body and a couple cans of paint. That, that's not as big of a deal. The boats are a bit bigger of a deal because, you know, you, you don't have the luxury of just painting on the backside of a clear Lexan body. You really got to, you know, focus on getting your paint job done correctly. So the marker comes in handy. If you find that you missed a spot after you get the graphics on and you can see, in this case, this boat's yellow, you know, a yellow gap, get yourself the chiseled version, pointed version, I'm sorry, like this, but it needs to be in the same marker type, the pro, right? And then you can very carefully run this marker using the graphic edges in the gap of the graphic and you can cover the yellow. I'll put an image of the different pro series up in the corner so you can see them. But again, it has to be this specific one. I can't guarantee results on any other. Some of the other ones I tried didn't adhere to this clear coat. It sort of just bubbled up a little bit and I could wipe it off with my hand. This guy works and it, it really does leave a beautiful like finish. Like it's glossy and it's, it's actually amazing. Um, so there's that. Again, you're going to leave, you know, depending on the boat you have, it could leave uh, a ghost image behind if you want to take the graphics off someday. If you get sick of the graphics, you can always just buy a new set and replace them if I'm, if I'm still here, right? So uh, that is an option if you don't want to paint your boat black. And again, you don't have to do any of this. You can leave your boat yellow if you don't mind seeing the lines. It's fine with me. At the end of the day, it's up to you. So I'm going to put this in high speed. I'm going to go ahead and mark up this particular boat with this marker so that we have a foundation, you know, and a guide to see what happens. So without any further ado, let's get started with that.
done going over this with my marker. It's not perfect, it's not beautiful, but the actual finish is beautiful. Uh, and what I can see when I've changed the color here is that there's actually some clear coat runs on this cap from the factory. The black gloss kind of shows me where the clear coat puddled. Anyhow, uh, here's where we are. And I've drawn in areas where I just know because I manufactured this, uh, where there's gonna be gaps. Uh, so if you happen to have a pursuit and you're watching this video, you can probably follow most of my lead here. If you don't have a pursuit, you'll need to extrapolate, you know, where the gaps are going to be based on the diagram printed on the kit when you get it, or touch it up after the fact with the smaller uh, marker that I told you about. I do see I need to come back around here and do this. It's going to be an amazing transformation because, uh, you know, right now, this sort of looks choppy, right? I get it. Uh, but once these graphics go on, it's going to change. I went ahead and, and did this. Let me make sure I'm, I'm in frame good here. You can see I did inside the cap so that when the cap sits down in, you don't see any yellow down there. Um, the only yellow you're really gonna see on the boats down here, but when it sits in the water, uh, you're not gonna see the yellow. The boat's just gonna look airbrushed from a distance and complete, okay? Now, <clears throat> that concludes the marker aspect of this video. I am gonna split this up into two different videos. One is how to do the marker thing for other people, and uh, then this video, which is gonna do marker right into installation. Uh, again, I am gonna come back here if you do have the pursuit, and I'm just gonna do this area here. Um, so if you're following along with the pursuit, do that. Uh, you do need to take this grommet out on the pursuit. I used to cut around with the machines, but I noticed over the years, people have told me that the hole didn't line up for them. And I'm, I'm left to assume uh, that during manufacturing, someone's just eyeballing that and, you know, drilling through. So there's no consistency. Solution is take it out, install the graphic, poke it out, and then put the grommet back in. So without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, I do want to say one more thing really quickly. I did take this heat gun here and I went over my markers, right? Cured it a little bit faster. Make sure it's dry before you start, okay? Because if you do get it on thick, it's kind of like, a, like an oily paint and it takes a little bit to cure. So, you know, use a finger test to make sure you're good. Rest assured, if some of these areas, you know, you see some yellow through because you scraped it or something like that, you can come back at a later time with the marker and touch it up, keep it black. Get yourself one of the fine tipped versions as well. They're good to have on hand. Okay, so as the instructions state that are inside the box, uh, you wanna prep with some isopropyl alcohol. I have some in a spray bottle here. I've already done that, okay? You wanna make sure you do that before you do the marker because the ISO can take some of the marker off, all right? It is a chemical, it's, a, it's alcohol. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, I've already prepped it, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my hall cap on here now that it's dry. There we go. And I want you to just look real quick here. Look at this nice black we've got now in here instead of that, that yellow down in that. Where do you see the transformation on that takes place here when I put this start to put these graphics on? Because right now, yes, it looks shoddy, but it won't in a second. Again, I've already prepped. I'm going to shake up my soapy water mixture. Soapy water mixture is covered in the instructions like all the other videos, but I'll just a quick little general tip. I have about uh, 26 ounces of water and about six to 10 drops of uh, dish detergent. Uh, general rule of thumb, when you lay the graphics on here and it's floating and you start to squeegee, if you hear a lot of snap, crackle, and popping, or if you start to notice you can't get the bubbles out, you need more soap in your mixture, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the uh, proper piece that I need off. But before I do, real quick, this comes with a diagram 
and you can see it right here. And it tells you based on the diagram uh, what pieces to install first. So in this case, we, it wants us to install the red pieces first, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to grab, see my X-Acto knife here, got myself a nice sharp knife, and I'm going to pluck the piece I need off the sheet. I'm making sure that my sheet is laying on a nice sterile surface. There's no oils, dirt, debris. And I'm gonna bring the piece over and set it on the boat upside down here, at least in my case. And I'm gonna immediately spray it with my soapy water mix. Once you do that, you're free to touch this because your hands won't stick. And we're gonna flop it just like this, okay? Watch the transformation. Especially in here. You see the black, this black edge here? Right? So now you can kind of see where we're going here. Uh, when this piece comes on, all you're gonna see is that black, right? So let me make sure that my camera is nice, right? Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make sure I leave myself a 16th inch gap on the side of that rolled edge, all rolled edges. I'm gonna check as I stand in front of the camera so you can't see. Make sure that my front is aligned. Basically what I'm saying is the tip up here needs to be centered and squared on the tip there. Uh, I'm ready to go. I mean, I'm looking at this, it's a perfect fit. I'm gonna heat it up and we're gonna adhere it down the center right there. That way we have a nice fixed point. Need it nice and soft. I've got my felt tip squeegee. You can get them off Amazon. Covered that in a lot of my videos. I'm gonna go right down the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna go like this. And what this is gonna do now is we've got a mild connection down this center axis, right? So that it's not gonna slip around on me. Now on this hull in particular, this has a little bit of a beveled edge and that beveled edge needs to come in down like this before we adhere this edge down. This is how tight these are cut to fit these specific boats, okay? So when I engineer this, if you decide to push this down and then heat this up and pull that down, this isn't gonna sit right over here. The, the process of push making this go down in this valley here where my squeegee is actually pulls this graphic this way a 16th of an inch or so. And, th and then when this goes down, it sits where it should sit on the beveled edge. So let's do that. I'm gonna give myself some heat to soften things up. And I'm gonna take my Amazon Basics clean rag and I'm just gonna start working this beveled edge here with my finger. I got my finger wrapped around and as you can see, that's down. You will see it better on this side. Let's do the same thing. Just like this. Again, wrap my finger around, make sure that my rag doesn't touch anything down here. And I'm just gonna, you don't need to push down too hard. Whoops, of course I got my cord stuck in that, which is a no-no, but we're okay. My cord's nice and clean. And there we go, right? If it doesn't stay down, the first few pulls you do with the rag, heat it back up and do it again. It's no big deal. Okay. Just gonna keep it warm. Checking for any bubbles here. I don't see anything other than my clear coat that came off. There's a couple little ridges there where you can see the original graphics underneath, but it's barely noticeable and wouldn't bother a perfectionist like me because these graphics are so cool, I just don't care. You can see the water bubbling out here. 
as I continue to pull. And as I get to that where that water's bubbling out, I keep working back because this will soak that water up so it doesn't get sucked back in, okay? I'm gonna keep doing this until I think or feel like all the water is out of that little valley in there. Come over here, I'm gonna push this forward. I'm gonna pull this back again. It's bl blowing the water out there, so I'm just gonna soak it up. Beautiful. Okay. Now we'll work this down a little bit more. On, we'll start on this side where you guys can see. I'm gonna heat it up. And I'll use my squeegee and just start working it. This will start me down and then I'll come back with my rag probably. Careful not to get this up underneath here so that you contaminate your, adhes your adhesive, okay? So I'm gonna take my rag and make a nice, and what that does is it contours better than the squeegee. You can take the squeegee and go on that contour, but you know, it takes a lot longer. And if you do it this way, you can hit more surface area more evenly. But the trick is to make sure you get the water out evenly first. I'm gonna just spray that a little bit for some lubrication, much better. There we go. And I'm gonna heat it back up again. As you can see, it's a process, you heat it up. Squeegee it down, it cools down a little bit, and you repeat. Again, I've still got moisture on there, which helps it slide. And you can see, little by little here, it's just going down. This is like a, sort of like an encapsulation of the hull. This stuff is just so thick and bulletproof that, uh, it's like a, it's like an epoxy resin that you're sort of putting on this thing. Okay, we're working our way up. We're gonna do the front of the boat last. That looks really good. Now it, it looks done, right? But you may notice a curl up here and there and you'll have to come back and, and take care of that. But just look how tight that line is on that beveled edge there. It's perfect, right? You don't need to mess around with it. I'm gonna do this other side here. I'll speed up the film a little bit. It's the same process, just the other side. Okay. Got that done. Let's work on the tip here a little bit. See if I can zoom in. There we go. A little bit of heat. I'm gonna work my way forward. I don't wanna to use too much heat here because I don't wanna stretch this. And I think I already put a little too much heat on, so I'm just gonna let it cool and do more of a pressing action here instead of a pulling action because I don't wanna stretch it forward if I can help it. I can already feel that it's cooling back to room temperature. That's how quickly it, it'll cool off. So I can add just a little bit more heat and, oops, I'm out of frame, sorry guys. There we go, and there we go. You can see it's just, you know, if you're good with your hands, this is gonna be no big deal for you. And I will come back again with some heat. And now I'm just gonna take this and sort of do like a roll because there's a little bit of moisture stuck in there. I'm trying guys, I promise. It's hard to hold the boat make a film and do something like this at the same time. And I'm just sort of doing a pressing action here. Um, it's warm and the water's squirting out and this is soaking it up for me at the same time. I got a little bit of a rolled edge there that wants to come up. So I'm gonna heat it up underneath, which is gonna evaporate any residual moisture. And I'm gonna do a push roll down here. Heat is everything. You cannot install graphics without heat. Okay, at the very end, I'm gonna go over the entire thing here and show you guys, you know, what's doing uh, as far as like what pieces I have left to fix. 
Let's work our way back. I stopped right in here, and that's important to remember because you don't want to leave a spot here where you got water trapped. So we'll just do an overlap. I stopped here, but I'm going to start back here with some heat. I'm going to work my way up. Okay. My, my threshold here is nice. I've got a nice 16th inch gap on that rolled edge there going in towards the cap. And I'm just taking my squeegee. Now I'm going to uh, progress over into the towel. And just work it down. You can see I'm working down from the top. It cools. I heat it back up. Wrapping my finger down a little bit more. See that? Pushing the water out and down. One tip I can give you is if you heat it up too much, so as you start to heat it up, it'll curl down with gravity. If you start to heat it up too much, it wants to curl up against gravity. So that's a good indication that you've got enough heat. And as you can see, I heated it up just a little bit too much there, which isn't a problem as long as you don't go too far with it. But you can use that as sort of the bellwether. And I can tell I got a lot of moisture stuck underneath that right there. So. Go. Beautiful. Okay. This is, let me get a different camera angle here. There we go. I am not a pro at making a videos and I apologize. Do my best. I'm going to come back and do this side high speed. It's the same process. And then we'll tighten up this back edge here. Okay. <clears throat> now we're on to this, this back edge. We've got two strategic relief cuts here so that when you fold this down, they made up perfect. And now you can see why I brought that black marker down around there because there's that gap there. Imagine if this gap right here was, there, can you see it? Imagine if that gap right there was yellow, right? It would look awful. But because we did the marker, we took care of that. I'm gonna come right down the center there and then I'm gonna go like that. You notice I'm not fighting with anything. This is strategically cut. I spent days making these templates for these boats so that you don't have to deal with anything. You can rest assured that when you get this, as long as it's the correct boat, everything is going to be almost or at perfection. And that's why these things aren't necessarily cheap ripoffs that you buy, you know, on some, some places on eBay. This is really, I think, high, high quality stuff. I'll let you be the judge. I know that people who race, people that, especially with RC cars and boats, they demand perfection. I've learned that over the years. I get it and I understand it. Okay. And I'm going to give you a look. Okay. Here we go. Let me turn the lights up so you guys can see this honey chrome sparkle. Here we go. Nice. Look at that honey chrome. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome. See the black doing its job in the gaps? Right? Honey chrome sparkle. Real nice. Real nice. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the sides. That's what the instructions tell us to do. 
and I'm going to stop the film here, reset myself, and then we'll press ahead. Okay, let's get a side done here. So I'm going to take the cap off, and I'm going to do the side with the portal so you can see the process on this particular boat. Uh, like I said earlier, I have stopped cutting out the holes for the side uh, portals because they seem to be in a different position all the time, uh, which means they're probably uh, hand uh, drilled out. So I'm going to set that aside. You can see now I've got a nice clean slate. Once we get this installed, you can come back and poke that out and put that piece back in carefully and tighten it up from the back side, okay? So this has already been prepped. I'm going to spray it down with my soapy water all the way to the front. I'm also going to spray the top a little bit here in case my graphic sticks to this graphic. I don't want it to stick. And I'm going to pull the piece off the sheet that I need. And I'll get it over here in frame for you guys. Laying it down on my table, spraying it. This piece is going to require a little bit of heat to get it to turn and go up. So what you want to do is you want to line up your design. Actually, let's take a step back. Look at the marker we did, right? And the gap on that rolled edge and watch what happens. Oops, line it up, Jared. Okay, beautiful. Look how I've got a nice black edge now because of the marker, right? That looks fantastic, much better than if we left that yellow with this with the original broken design kind of showing through. So what I'm gonna do here, it looks like I need to go this way, about another 16th. Yep, yep, there we go. The goal here is to keep yourself a nice even gap. I'm gonna get this fixed down and then I'm gonna work both sides. I'm gonna go grab myself my squeegee, which is hiding right here. And we're just gonna get it fixed down. Looks like I can come up just a little bit there. I got a little overhang on the bottom. You don't want any overhang down here, so we may have to come back and trim that at the end. A lot of this depends on when you squeegee this top piece down, it can stretch a 16th per every couple inches that you pull it when it's heated. And so when you come back to leave your gap, uh, if, if this piece was this way a little bit more, you're gonna end up pushing this piece down a little bit more, which is what happened there. Common and normal, but that's why we start from the center and work our way out and down, because it's easier to trim this than it is this. I'm gonna add some heat. Fantastic. Let's work our way forward here. Okay. I'm gonna spray this because it did dry a little bit on me. Whoopsie. Let me get that set. Okay, and look at how it just perfectly comes around. You're gonna get a little bulge right here, which is to be expected. We're gonna set that down with the heat. Just like that, okay? And right here, I think was my portal. Again, I want to keep, I want to keep that gap even across there. That's important. We've got a nice flat edge we can work with here, so we can just slide the squeegee. And looks like my gaps are pretty good here. Oops. When I make mistakes, you see that? I'm gonna show you how to fix this mistake. I got a little wrinkle in that. I'm just gonna heat it up, it disappears. Heat it up a little bit more. There we go. And back we go. So I used a little bit too much force in combination with a little bit too much heat. 
and the vinyl got soft and decided it wanted to give me a wrinkle. Now, if this was not as thick as it was, that wrinkle would be a tear, probably. I think I'm getting to the point now where it's thin enough this way that I'm gonna just use my, uh, my towel. So I'm gonna hold it with my thumb here. Find my towel, wrap my finger around, and very patiently, just work it. Like that. Very patient process. Try my squeegee here. Mm hmm. That helped me get that nice rolled edge down there a little bit easier in this situation. Now, as you push it down, realize it wants to come back up. You have to keep doing it because every time you do it, a little bit more water comes out. You can't even see it really because this felt tip squeegee absorbs it. It's such a little bit of, of, of water. You, in a lot of these cases, you can't even see it. You just got to trust the process and just keep working. And the proof is in the pudding here because as you can see, I'm getting it, right? It just takes time. And as you can see, it's just this rotation between heat, squeegee, towel, heat, squeegee, towel, and patience. But the outcome is fantastic if you take your time and you, and you just do everything right. And I think and trust that the camera is picking up how that black marker has come into play on this gap. Now, I'm not gonna worry so much right now about getting this rolled edge, it still wants to kind of sit like that, down completely. What I'm gonna focus on is the bigger picture. And at the end, I'm gonna come back when the boat's all done, and I'm gonna worry about these smaller picture items like that rolled edge and the graphic wanting to sit down. When you give it some time, take a break, go to lunch, you know, at the end, when this is rolled up like this on these edges, they dry because it's exposing the moisture filled vinyl to the air and it dries. And when you come back, you'll notice a big difference in its in its desire to want to do a final sit down as compared to sitting here and, you know, heating it up and coming back and little things I've learned over the last 20 years that I'm passing on to my customers. Okay, pretty much got it where I need it to be before I start to say we need to let it sit. I've got a pretty heavy rolled edge down here, but I think it's because I need to come back and trim that at the end at the bottom. Again, that's normal. These are cut and fit on here without heat. Uh, so that is a wild card that comes into play, which is why uh, I want you to, to do it in the order of operations printed on the sheet so that any final trimming is going to be at the bottom and instead of all over the place. Everything is, is by design. Awesome. What a beautiful, beautiful finish. Here's our portal right here. I'm going to stick my knife in. I can feel the hole right there trying to get my boat to sit in 
the holder. I'm just going to stick it in here and very carefully sort of do like a sawing pattern. Make sure that this is dry enough and cured before you go ahead and do this. If you're unsure, let it sit out in the sun for a while uh, and cure because as you saw it, if it's not cure, it'll pull up on you. Okay, there we go. Gonna use a little heat. Soften that up for me just a little bit. Push it down. And I'm gonna take my portal. Gonna unscrew it. Stick it in. Looks like it wants to screw in, which is fine. Gonna just reach in here and help this in from the back side. Excuse my reach, guys. There we go. And I'm gonna take the nut and at least get it on there temporarily so I don't lose it. Word of the wise. Do not tighten this from the front, okay? Because you'll twist, you could twist the vinyl, especially while it's still warm. Tighten it from the back while holding it so it doesn't spin on the front. You don't want the bolt portion to spin, spin the nut so that it compresses down. You want the spin to be on the back where the fiberglass is, okay? So here's where we are. I've got some trimming to do at the bottom, but as you can see, I've got a nice graphic registration check out those black lines. They look fantastic. I'm going to speed up the film and do the other side. Okay, here we are. I've got both sides done. We will trim them at the very end. But let me get you, let me turn the lights on so you can see the honeycomb. There we go. Let me, am I zoomed out? Yes, I am. Here we go. Beautiful. Look at that nice black line from the marker. See it? It gloss, it's glossy. It's not a matte finish. You can see the honeycomb uh, shimmering and sparkling there. Turn it around. Nice black line, but will sit in the water. You won't see the yellow for the most part while it's in the water. You see, I put my portal back in. Nice clean finish. Nice transition from black to yellow on the back. But as you look at the boat from the side or the top down, you really can't see anything else. So what's our next step? Uh, the next step is I'm gonna get the, get the cap done. Then I'm gonna come back and get all my loose ends tied up. There's some, still some spots that are you know not quite down. I'm gonna trim the bottom, do all that stuff, and I'll walk you all through it, okay? So let's get the cap on here. Very nice. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna spray this down with our water mixture. In fact, I'm gonna get it around on the graphics too so I don't have any accidents with sticking. And I'm off camera. <clears throat> I'm gonna pluck off the, the cap top. Now, a couple things about the cap top. It's extremely uh, strategically cut because this is a unique cap design with the air intake. And so I had the room on the sheet on this particular boat to include more than one. If you mess it up, you've got an extra one, okay? And you probably saw that in the beginning. Let me get my camera moved here. I'm gonna raise the camera up and do sort of like a straight down shot for you guys. I'm gonna start in the back 
I'm leaving my my 1 16th gap. Look how perfect that fits, right? You can see right here, I left a little bit of yellow. Can you see that right there? So maybe what I'll do before I go any further, there's a little relief cut right there and I forgot about it. So as long as you take this off and set it upside down, you'll be fine. You can uh, give it another little spray down so it doesn't dry out on you. And what I'm gonna do is take my rag, dry that, evaporate it with that. And all I gotta do is just come back here and go like that, right? I'm gonna put my trusty marker away. I'm gonna give it another quick little burst of heat to dry that off, the marker that is. Do a little test touch here. Nothing coming off on my finger, so I'm, I appear to be good to go. And I'm gonna need to respray this. Now watch what happens. This was the, this was the cut right here, that little relief cut, gone. You see it right there? Well, you shouldn't see it. So there it is showing up as yellow. And now when we place it over top the marker, it's gone. That's the power and the importance of going with a black hull. It, you cannot see it. It looks like a shadow. Even if you do see it, it's a fantastic way to set your project apart from the guy who doesn't want to take that extra step. I promise you that extra step is worth every ounce of time that you put into it. Let's get this back down. I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna grab myself a fresh squeegee. I think I've covered this in other videos. Make sure that your felt tip squeegees don't have debris in them. If you do, you'll and you run that across that, it's, it's like sandpaper, okay? If you have to, switch squeegees once in a while. They're cheap enough, you know, you don't need to conserve them. What you wanna be careful with here is at this ridge point, you don't leave yourself like a bubble. You wanna make sure you start from the ridge and work your way down. I'm gonna switch over to my towel now. And I need to lubricate this a little bit. There we go, huge difference between trying to take a dry towel that's on a warm graphic and a wet one, huge difference. Now we've got a little indentation here on the cap. It's a design feature in the, in the cap. So make sure that you run your towel and your finger across that design feature, okay? Turning my towel because there's a lot of water coming out at the bottom and I just wanna soak it up. Nice and patient. I'm going around. I can feel that I've lost my heat. So I'm gonna come back and warm it up. And a lot of this heat doesn't actually reside in the graphic as much as it does. It goes through the graphic and heats up the fiberglass where you've got the mass. And then that sort of radiates up through to the graphic for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. That's the ticket, okay? Now, the other ticket's gonna be, can I do this while keeping it in frame? Another relief cut here. I'm gonna zoom in. Another relief cut right here. I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna take my fingers like this. And just go over this raised splined and down, over and down, over and down. Very nice. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna lubricate, and I'm checking for any pockets. I don't see any down, down the spline. That looks fantastic. And I'm gonna try and get these out of the way here. I'm gonna lubricate these again. A 
looks great. Okay, and we're just gonna keep working our way. Like this. I'm gonna stick with my towel for now. There's a little bit of a, of a dip here. I'm gonna work in there. Look how pretty this black, I mean, that black marker looks like a gloss paint job. There's no, I, I can't see any streaks. I don't know what Sharpie did to this marker that makes it different than the standard ones they sell, but it really did a good job. I mean, I am thoroughly impressed with the quality of using that marker instead of, you know, going through the process of the paint job if that's not what you want to go through. Again, the drawback is, like I said, if you take the graphic kit off, you probably want to going to want to get a new graphic kit, you know, if you're going to switch your themes, because you will see those marker lines. But as you can see, look how this is turning out. I mean, you can see it's just a choppy sort of marker line, but once you get the graphics on, all you see from the marker then is just that, that little gap. And that's all you need to see to appreciate what it's doing for you. Really cold up here, so I need to heat that up. I'm gonna water that piece back down because I don't want it to stick quite yet. Make sure that that's down. Really, that that piece wasn't that bad. That was pretty cool. Uh, it went on really easy for me. This little tab here, I'm just gonna heat it up underneath and do a dry stick down because it's so small. I don't want to really push that around. Perfect. Let's get the boat flipped, and we'll work on this other side. I'm gonna speed it up because it's a it's. The same thing, just a different side. Okay, I've got this other side down. And up here, I've got a little extra uh, overhang. So I'll show you how to tackle that. What I'm gonna do is uh, heat that up so I can kind of do a dry push down and it's going to overlap. Now you can either, you can probably get away with leaving this little overlap here if you like, because it's just such a small area on the boat, but I'm going to show you how to remedy this. And the reason that there's an overlap here is because as I heated this up, it stretched a little bit. So I'm taking the flat edge of the back of my, uh, exacto knife here. And while it's warm, I kind of pushed it against the other piece so I get a nice clean edge look to it and see where I'm at. And then I run my knife down that edge and that's all there is to it. Done. I'm gonna take my heat and do a final little push down here. There we go. Take my rag and go over this and uh, this piece has a bit of a rounded edge and this piece doesn't anymore because, you know, I, I cut it. If you're a perfectionist, you can come back and, and sort of trim that out there if you like. So there is a couple more pieces. The first one is going to be the windshield graphic. And it does tell you, you know, the order. And this is one of the last pieces that you, that you do. I'm going to pluck that off the sheet just like everything else. I'm going to bring it over, I'm going to spray it down, and I'm going to lay it on here. Again, here's my marker, right? Went around with my marker, and wow, look what that marker does. It hides all that original yellow and everything else. Now on the windshield graphic, because it's the last piece you put on, depending on how much you stretched your other pieces, you may need to just give it a little trim ruski. Again, it's vinyl, it stretches, and no matter how many times I cut this stuff for perfection, I get you into the extremely close ballpark. But depending on where your final lays are and your, how much heat you used, how much you decided to stretch it, things like that, the final piece, you generally have to fight a little bit to get in there. 
and do a little bit of modification if necessary. So far, I don't see anywhere that I'm gonna have to modify. I've got uh, a little bit of a ripple here. I'm trying to get it so you guys can see. And that's because I kissed this over here and forced that extra that way. And you can get away with that to an extent if you use some heat even with this thick product. And I'm proving it to you right there. See how it's, it's down, right? Little ripple right there because I got a little bit of moisture stuck in there. So I'll, I'll go over to my towel, do sort of a rock down press there. I'm not gonna push it because it's already kissing almost that other piece and I don't want it to completely kiss it. There we go. Now I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna lift this off, respray it. Give me some extra time. This piece, I do not see anywhere that I'm going to need to trim. So I got lucky. Now, if your pieces, you had to stretch a little bit more or you just chose to heat it up more, you may need to trim, okay? Beautiful. Grab my towel, here we go, finish that off. Looks like I just overlapped this a little bit right there. Let me see if I can just fix that. I think I can get away, nope, that's pretty well down. So I will need to trim right here. So what I'm gonna do is heat it up, I'm gonna uh, make sure I have that little ridge there. And I'm just gonna come in here with my X-Acto and trim that off. Nice clean cut. There we go. Heat it up, get my moisture out of there, and that's good. There is a piece that goes up here. However, I chose to paint that black. You can put that piece in if you want, but the piece itself is black because it's an intake, right? There's one more piece left. Super easy one, and then you can celebrate and have another beer. Right here, spray it down. We're gonna pluck it off the sheet. And it'll sit in there just like so. Absolutely beautiful. A little bit of heat, and I can't really get my squeegee in there, so I'm just gonna take my towel, need to lubricate. There we have it, right? So I'm gonna reset here, and then I'm gonna walk you guys through wrapping this project up and what I do to do that. Okay, this project is pretty much done. What I'm gonna do now is start off with the standard camera speed, and I'm gonna go through a uh, couple final touches and then I'll speed it up and do the whole thing. On the edges, get some of this stuff out of the way. On these edges, the graphic wants to curl just a little bit like, like that. I can see it here, especially on a rolled edge. So what you need to do is come back with your heat and dry it and push it down. Dry it, push it down, keep working it. Uh, sometimes where I live, you know, in Pennsylvania in the summer, especially if it's, if it's nice out in the summer, I'll take this out and set it in the sun on a nice clear day. You know, no dusty roads around where, you know, dust can get up underneath there. Just set it in the sun and let it cook. And those rolled edges will evaporate out all the residual moisture. And then you, it's a lot easier to come in and push them down. I don't have that luxury today because it's currently the end of winter and it's miserable outside. Uh, so I'm gonna use my heat gun. Here we go. Just gonna go over. Now I will say I, I took a break and I went in and I had my lunch. So even in this climate controlled room, it did evaporate out on its own. Here's a, here's a tab here, I'll pull it back so you can see and then it's down, okay? But you really need to heat it up, especially on these curved edges, and get it to set down for you. 
it's very important. If for some reason you don't succeed in that and you go out to the lake and you get some contamination up underneath an edge, you'll probably need to trim it back past that contamination so that it doesn't spread. But it's a process and uh, taking your time and doing it correctly is imperative. Uh, I'm going around, I'm looking for any air bubbles. I don't see anything. Um, if you do find it, you can pop it and you know warm it up just a little bit and sort of just push the water or the air out the bubble. I'm going to speed up the film and then we will regroup at the end and do some final trim work. Some of them I was still able to push out and the water came squirting out the side. A couple of them I had to sort of, I, I poked, held my knife in there and wiggled it a little bit as I pushed the water out and it came out that way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a brand new blade on and then I'm gonna trim the sides. Another little tip I can tell you, I use this towel around the boat stand. What it does is it helps take up uh, any play as I'm working on the boat and keeps it from getting scratched because I do move it around a lot. What I'm gonna do now is just take my finger and I'm gonna go over this. I don't want this to wrap down around this beveled edge because it's a lot of pressure from the water hitting that, right? So, <clears throat> I'm gonna take my knife on a low angle like this. I'm gonna use my finger as a guide and I'm just gonna go like this in one, nice clean motion using my finger as the guide and I'll blend it out there because when, once I get back to here my tolerances are correct it's just in the middle here where I had to probably stretch it and I'm just gonna pull it off just like that I see got a little bubble there I'm gonna push that out I'm gonna come back look at my tolerance again very, very, very important that you get this up off that lip. If it goes down around, that water pressure is going to pull on that graphic. You don't want that, okay? Make sure you're back at least a sixteenth from that rounded edge. I'm going to come around this side, and I'm going to do the same thing. If you notice up here, I'm good. It's only down here in the middle and at the end. So again, I'm using my finger as a guide. If you're a carpenter, if you ever see a carpenter draw a straight edge on a board with their finger and a pencil, it's the same process I'm using. If I need a little bit more, I loosen my finger up and let the blade come in a little bit more. And right there, it, it feathers out. And I can get my knife here lift it up and pull it back. It looks like I didn't cut quite deep enough. That's okay because I took the heavy uh, clear coat off and now I can run my knife right on the edge of the clear coat and take the base off. By clear coat, I mean the over laminate. There we go. And what I'm exposing there is the original artwork of the skulls, okay? That is it. That concludes the project. And what I'll do now is I'll give you a tour of the boat once I reset my camera. Okay, here we go. I am super, super happy with this boat. I'm just gonna clean up my tools here. There we go. This boat turned out amazing. 
This is the first time that I've ever done the marker uh, process. And look at these nice, clean, black gaps that I've achieved using the marker. Okay? Beautiful black gaps without having to paint the entire thing. Nice artwork registration. This is a great investment into your boat. Really, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic way to make something uh, of your boat that nobody else has. A lot of these things, you can customize them color-wise. There's hundreds and hundreds of options for each, most of the themes. Uh, the chaos theme, not really a lot of options because it's been locked in to have these specific colors, but there are some that do. So until next time, thank you for watching. And again, this is the TFL Pursuit. I'll put a link down below uh, to those products. Also a link down below to the website so you can take a look at other things. This boat will be for sale. It will be discounted heavily in lieu of the clear coat that I talked about on this particular model that I got from the manufacturer having a defect. If that's your thing, uh, you know, you want to save a little bit of money because you don't care about that you're gonna get the labor for free. Uh, all you need to pay for is what the value of this boat is today, market value, and the sticker kit, free labor. Uh, thank you for watching.